I can't believe it. They actually did it. Yeah, I've been using advanced custom fields for over a decade and coming back and seeing it just replaced with secure custom fields over this petty drama. This is, where are we? What's happening? Are we in the twilight zone? I mean, I guess backing up, the writing has been on the wall with WordPress for quite some time, I think. Like, just go to the dashboard. They're advertising WordPress events to you. Where does this come from? Get out of my software. This doesn't come with the repo. Clearly there's something else going on that maybe shouldn't be in the open source world here, but so like here we are kind of at a crossroads. Do I think WordPress is gonna go anywhere? No, but it's kind of maybe an opportunity for us to take a step back and look at what we're in and think about what the world would look like if we didn't all rely on WordPress for things that maybe never should have done in the first place, by the way. But let's just dive into that a little bit. Let's, let's talk about it. Now, to the surprise of absolutely no one, I am not the biggest fan of WordPress. I have a lot of respect for them, but I literally built a company so that I didn't have to ever use it myself ever again. And here we are, it was a lot of work. But luckily Payload has some safeguards in place to make it so that if anyone on the Payload team ever became insane, they literally could not steal your plugins or your hard work because we use, just like any common sense open source software, a third party package repository to install dependencies called NPM in our case. And that's owned by Microsoft. And if Microsoft stole your plugin, I think we'd be in a different world of hurt right now. Um, I don't think that's gonna matter. But if we're gonna be thinking about where we go after WordPress, I think we should start by looking at its strengths and try to replace the strengths, right? And to me, the biggest strength of WordPress was that it was open source. And every time I pitched it to clients, they were like, sweet, let's go. But every time I tried to pitch a third party software as a service content management system, they were like, ooh, uh, what happens if we wanna change vendors in like six months? What happens if the vendor increases their pricing in three months? What happens if we wanna reuse our database? What happens if we hit a roadblock and we don't have a feature that we need and we can't build it because we don't own the code? So I think thinking about a world without WordPress, it's important to value it for what it was good at and open source is part of that. Um, but then outside of that, I think we can break down the people that use WordPress into two different categories. And the first category is people that are building no code, um, cobbling together themes and plugins off the shelf and throwing a Hail Mary, crossing their fingers, praying that nothing breaks or explodes or they don't get hacked. And you know, that crowd, the Elementor, the WP Bakery, I wonder if WP Bakery is gonna get sued. Interesting. Um, that crowd, I don't know that Payload would really be a good fit for that crowd because they should just go find some open source website builder tool, like a visual one. Like no code is not really Payload's thing. Payload is more focused on the types of people that use WordPress to build things from scratch. I'm talking write your own theme. I'm talking first step, install the classic editor. Second step, install ACF, build out your schema, and then craft your editing experience in code how you want it to be. Those types of WordPress installations, that's what I used to do. Those ones are a natural fit for payload. And I'm gonna show a little bit about that. I'm gonna spin up an ACF project and, well, I already did, and it was traumatizing. But I'm gonna compare that ACF project over to a payload project and kind of talk about the differences, some of the important ones, and show you that it's maybe a natural upgrade path for you as we think about this new uh, opportunity. Okay, so here's a pretty typical WordPress instance, kind of triggered by the advertising to me right here in open source software, but we're gonna put that behind us. SCF, oh, triggered again, can't believe they did that. Okay, so here's how ACF generally works, right? I added two post types called directors and movies, and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. So post types are the first thing that I wanna concentrate on. Like post types are insane. The fact that I have something called directors which is considered a post type, that just drives me crazy. It's not a post type, it should be a table in a database. But in WordPress, somehow we've been dealing with this since 2003, it goes in the WP posts table. Why? I couldn't tell you. But here's a director and here it is in the WP posts table, right next to movies. You'd think that the schema might be different between these two things, but nope. WordPress, ACF, they just jam everything into one table, call it a day, move on. 
And this is, you have to pay for this. This isn't even true open source because you have to pay for a license. But anyways, so we've got two post types, um, directors and movies, and I'm using the free version. And then we have field groups. So I have directors and movies. And this field group is assigned to the director post type and the movie is assigned to the movie post type, right? And this is very simple. I've just, Lord of the Rings, best movie ever made. You can tell me that it's not and I will plug my ears. But this is pretty typical. If you're used to ACF, you know that you can install some custom fields down here. So I did a relationship field and a poster field, right? And I like Rivendell, Riverdale. I can't remember. Rivendell? But anyways, ACF right here. You're all probably very familiar with this. Ooh, this is fun. I created the post type and I accidentally left the O capitalized. Movie. But then I went back and I tried to fix it. So I fixed it, but it doesn't actually fix. So I don't know where this is. Must be in the database somewhere. I don't know where they save that, but it's pretty interesting. Okay, and then we go to directors and directors is pretty simple. We've got a couple fields. Peter Jackson directed Lord of the Rings. Now this is pretty straightforward. And in the payload world, it's pretty similar. I mean, you don't really have to use code for this, but unfortunately you do have to learn about this mania over here. Export as JSON, let's do it. Ooh, download that. I don't know what I'm gonna open that in. No, X, oh God, get out, Never mind. Um, okay, you have to download the JSON as a backup. You gotta import that JSON if you wanna edit your fields and share them with somebody else. And then you gotta generate the PHP and put it in your functions.php file. This is madness. We've been doing this for almost two decades. We don't have to do this. We don't have to do this. Look at how it looks in payload. So I'm gonna go over here, I've spun up this. This is a brand new payload project out of the box. The only thing I did was I added the movies and the directors here as the two collections. This is our website template. You can go spin up the website template, it's pretty cool. It comes with live preview out of the box so you can see what you're working on. And uh, if I spin this up and wait for it to compile over here, I can say like test, 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 and I can see my changes in real time because payload and Next.js are kind of connected. So payload is actually, it's been coming along. Um, why am I in light mode? Let's go to dark mode, okay. Cool, but anyway, this is the website template out of the box. We added two collections, movies and directors. So if I go to movies, Here's the list view. So if we compare this, we go back over here, list view, list view, and then we go to Lord of the Rings. Here's our rich text editor. You can drag and drop things. It's actually JSON. It's not HTML strings. So that's very, that's a very big deal. But other than that, we've got an image field here. We can edit this poster if we want to. We can edit the director here. We've got a relationship to the director. We've got the year it was made, whatever we want. And so this is kind of like a shot for shot like replacement. And you can even put things in the sidebar with payload. So it's very similar to how WordPress works. But then going back over to directors, let's see that. There's some cool things. Uh, one thing to remember is that we have a relationship field right here. Peter Jackson is the director. We go over to directors. This is a new feature in payload 3.0 but we have bi-directional relationships, which is something that ACF doesn't even have. You define the relationship on movies, and then you go over to directors and you can see all of the movies that this director has filmed. And it works out of the box. I can go edit this right here. And the bi-directional thing is brand new. It's coming out with payload 3.0, but it's pretty cool. I couldn't do that in ACF, otherwise I would have. But you can see it's kind of the same idea here. Now the big, big difference between WordPress's database shape and payloads is that in payload, the database is exactly how you said that it should be. I have a year column. I have a director ID, which is a foreign key to the directors table. I have a poster ID column, which is a foreign key to the media table. And I have a description, which is a JSONB. This is Postgres. You can use MongoDB. You can use Postgres or SQLite. But everything works out of the box. You can even do indexes. And if you compare this type of thing over to WordPress's obliteration over here, I don't even know how to describe this. Look at this. There's comments. There's a comment that is functional. That's a functional comment right there. 
I don't know, man. I don't know. Man, I get fired up real easy, so I'm going to cut it there. Um, I think that's been enough. But if you're coming from that second camp of WordPress users, the ones that actually write code and they know what functions.php is and they don't like Elementor, then you might find a lot of value with Payload. If you're looking for what's next after WordPress in general, I think that sticking with open source is going to be the move. And outside of that, I think Payload is a pretty good substitute, especially for those of you that have been using ACF a lot. I think that inspired a lot of what Payload does, just ACF in general. But we thought, you know, hey, advanced custom fields. What if they were just fields, you know? I think WordPress maybe should have had that in 2004 after it came out, but here we are, 2024. Um, that's it. Goodbye.